Like what you see? Like to be in the know? Visit Facebook.com slash WBGU and like us today. Stay in touch with what's new at WBGU TV, national PBS programs, local productions, station events, and more. Born and raised in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Went to North High School and was out of North High School. At the grand old age of 17, I joined what was in the United States Army Air Corps and uh, applied and was accepted and of course the rest is history. When I was about 11 years old, I had a love affair with an airplane and I was going to become a military pilot. Well, of course, back in those days, we were a segregated society, not only by tradition, but by law. We had to fight two wars. We first had to win the battle of a right to fight. Then after we won that battle, we then went over and fought another battle. And we used to always talk about the double V, which means victory at home and victory uh, overseas. My junior year in high school, I managed to save up 35 whole bucks. So I went out to World Chamber and I took flight lessons. $7 for dual training, took five lessons, ran out of money. I said, but I'll be back. So in 1942, when I graduated in school, the Tuskegee Airmen program had all started up. I was 17 at the time. I went down, took the uh, written exams, passed them. I waited till I was 18 before they would give me the physical exam. Took the physical exam, passed it. So I waited three or four months before I got my letter got my letter and I was on my way. And uh, we were a very, very special group of people. We only have one purpose. You fly to protect bombers. We often think of Tuskegee Airmen, we only think of pilots. There were an awful lot of other people who had to support us or we could have never flown. Now, the way we became the Red Tails, interesting enough, was not by design. The chief maintenance officer was down in Fulger looking for paint. And the color of the paint was all red. So he brought it all back to us. So we became the Red Tails, just by chance. Uh, of course, uh, we made the Red Tails popular because we became the Red Tail Angels. I flew approximately 30 missions. My 30th mission, I was on a strafing mission. And we were strafing up close to Lenz, Austria. And we had a wonderful day. And we'd go flying up there. And they didn't expect us and it was like throwing a fox in a briar patch. I mean, it was just heavy railroad traffic for 80, 90 miles, and we had a ball. We were just shooting the place up, a wonderful time. And I was in the lead flight with uh, flying on Major Camel's wing that day. And we go in on him, I could see Camel shooting. So he stops and he breaks off, he says, I'm out of ammunition. So I said, well, I got some bullets left. I got this locomotive lit up like a Christmas tree, but it wouldn't blow. About this time, the box cars fall down and there are pom-pom guns set in there, which are four barrel guns. And these things are coming up, passing right by my windshield. And I said, oh no, you know. So I said, well, if I'm pull up, I'm a setting duck, they'll blow me out of the sky. So I just kept driving in. I said, blow up, blow up. And just as I got ready to pull up, it blows, and everything blows with me sitting right in the whole explosion. So the plane was severely damaged. I pulled it out and I had to jump out, bail out. And I was picked up by a couple of constables. We came back to the village. And you can imagine who I met as I entered the village, about 30 people who are raving maniacs. I don't speak German, but I can understand boom, boom, boom. And I can understand when they do this, they're talking about a noose around my neck. But I knew that I was gonna die that morning. There was not a doubt in my mind. But there was another constable way in the back. I wasn't paying that much attention to him, but I saw him walking around. And he gets up behind me. I felt his hand on my shoulder. He snatches, steps in front of me, and puts around in his chamber and holds the crowd back. That was just the start of about a 10-day trek for me to get to Nuremberg, where I was in, interrogated first and then put to a prison camp. But the one thing I regret, uh, never going back and looking that guy up, because he saved my life. And um, I regret it to this day. 
Those three little years from 17 to 20, which now defines my entire life. But I went on to have a wonderful career in the military, retired lieutenant colonel. I wound up, I spent my last 10 years flying uh, B-47s. I was an aircraft commander. And then the last few years, I went to the command post. And I had the opportunity uh, to make full colonel. Uh, by the time I was thinking about retirement, he says, you want to go back overseas to Vietnam? I said, oh, I'm tired, you know. I don't need another overseas duty. So I said, I think I'll retire. So I retired, I was 40 years old. Uh, retired with 23 years of service. Then went in education, uh, got my master's PhD from Ohio State. I was the vice president of academic affairs. And I retired from that. And, uh, so no, I don't do a thing except have fun and play golf. Scenic Stops is brought to you by WBGU-TV. Support great local programming by giving now at wbgu.org slash pledge.